I can't believe I'm revealing all these numbers to you. So in October 2020, I made what happened to be the best investment I've ever made in my life in one of the hottest real estate markets or Airbnb markets that a lot of people I talk to have still never heard of. Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Smoky Mountains, the most visited national park in the country. In this video, I'll be showing you my complete financials of this cabin, how much I made last year, and my thoughts of investing in the Smokies and other places. And at the end, I'll be giving some advice for new Airbnb investors looking to get into the space. So this cabin, not only did I make good money on it, which is an understatement, which you'll find out soon, it turned out to be a massive education for me, not just for Airbnb, but all my investments moving forward. And it wasn't easy. In fact, it was a nightmare. This house turned out to have some issues that my inspector missed, which like a good realtor, a good inspector is worth their weight in gold. I almost ended up not being able to handle it, but luckily I'm the family handyman. So I was able to walk in and over three trips, over three different weeks, I was able to come in and fix these issues. And once I had it set up, this thing was running great. And if you wanna hear the whole story, not just the financials of this cabin, my next video is gonna be about that, the whole story of what happened, the mold issues, the $30,000 I had to spend out of pocket on it. My next video is gonna be about that. So subscribe, and not just subscribe, make love to the subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? But this video is about the cash. So Airbnb and investing in the Smokies has gone crazy recently, and with good reason, 14.1 million people visited in 2021. It's the most visited national park in the country, and a lot of people still don't know about it. If you look on AirDNA, which is my preferred place to research new markets, for Airbnb, which is a whole other video about how I do that and where you should be looking. There's over 4,500 rentals just in the Gatlinburg area alone and over 2,600 in Pigeon Forge, which is the city next to it. And that leads to a few moments later. I'm an engineer, I should not be bad at arithmetic. Over 7,000 rentals, which is a ton. I mean, places like Joshua Tree, where there's been New York Times articles written about how there's too many Airbnbs and whatnot, that has under 2,000, I think. Yeah, there's a lot, but there's a lot of people going there. And when this cabin, I also have the pride of ownership. That's another reason I bought it, was like, I love Tennessee. I like it a lot. I love flying into Nashville. I host my family there a couple times a year. Sometimes I'll just go visit for a few days with some friends. We'll just sip some coffee on the deck, have some drinks, barbecue. It's great. And actually late last year, I shot a pilot there, which was cool for a major network. It didn't end up going, but who knows? I wish I could actually show the footage of that pilot because it was really cool. I don't think I'm allowed to, but you can pretend. And having this house has been good. It's just so fun to go there. I get so excited every time I visit. It's helped me work on my editing skills with my drone. I'm still working on it, but let's get into it. So this is a 2000 square foot, three level cabin. It's in the Chalet Village area of Gatlinburg, which is a nice area. It's got a lot of good views there. It's got a lot of character. There was actually a fire there, I think in 2016 or 2017, that burned down a lot of these cabins, unfortunately. From the street view, it's hard to tell that this is a nice house because it's on the side of a cliff. So when you look at the street view, it looks like this little one bedroom shack. But from the outside, you can tell, oh wow, this has some character. It's a cool house. There's a game room where I have a pool table. I've got a couple of Pac-Man machines. One of them is actually original Pac-Man machine, which I retrofitted with a new Multicade, but I'm never getting rid of that. I love it. Plus, I don't even think it'll fit outside the door. I don't know how they got it in there. I redid the floors. I put up this black wall to give it some character. It has a theater room. In fact, a bear got into my aunt's car one time because it was unlocked, and some of my guests actually say that. It's got massive windows where you can sit in the morning and have coffee. Look at the view, it's great. The sunsets in the evening are fantastic, but the number. So it was listed for 400. I knew the market was getting hot. I put in an offer for 455 and I got it. And then this video, I'm gonna be going through the big picture of what I bought it for and my mortgage and then the Airbnb stats of the first year. And then I'll be going through the revenue I got and the expenses and then the actual net income. So the home was purchased for 455,000. I did a 10% down loan, which is 45,500. So my total loan amount was 409,500. My interest rate at the time was 3.125%, which obviously was like the COVID rate. Who knows what'll happen in the future? I actually looked at refinancing this house recently because I could pull some equity out, but in the end, it just didn't make sense. So for now, I wanna keep this loan because it's a good deal. And I'd rather find other sources of income to pull out as opposed to refinancing this, even though that's tax-free. It's not interest-free. So my closing costs were $10,863, bringing the total cash to close to $53,363. A lot of threes in there. With that, I have a mortgage payment of $2,196, of which the PI and the PITI, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, is $1,754. That's the starting point. This loan is 18 months old, so I'm paying a couple bucks less now, but this is what I started with. As time goes on, I'll be paying off more principal. As you know, they front load the interest in the loan, so in the beginning, 
you're paying mostly interest, and as time goes on, the interest goes away, and you're paying off principal. That's how they get you. So let me get into the revenue on this house. Once I put the house up and remodeled it, which is an insane story, my family had to come out once. My aunt came out who likes doing this stuff. She's happy to do it. I had a friend come out one time, but at the end, it was all worth it. I get anxiety sometimes thinking about not pulling the trigger on this house. That's how well it did. Even though I literally had to find guys on Craigslist last minute to come in and help me, I'm so happy we did that. And my plumber from Tennessee is from New York. When he saw it, he said, Johnny, this is the fastest remodel I've ever seen. And yeah, once I put the house on Airbnb, it immediately started getting flooded with bookings. And once I introduced smart pricing software, the end of 2020, it started to level out and it started to lock in. By the way, if you're not using smart pricing software on your Airbnb, you're crazy because algorithms now have made it so much better. And you can figure out where your Airbnb stands in the muck of Airbnbs in your neighborhood. I use Price Labs. I think it's the best. I think they're a cool company. And if you wanna use Price Labs, you can use my referral link. I get 10 bucks and you get 10 bucks off. I think it's like 20 bucks a month for the basic plan. So yeah, the uh, link is down here. Go ahead and use it. Thank you, I appreciate it. But once I had it up and running and locked in, it was doing well, and it started doing better than I could ever imagine. When I bought the house, somebody said, how much do you expect to get out of this per night? I figured maybe 199, 250 a night. I knew that there were holidays that were gonna go up higher, and my experience with Airbnb showed me that you never know. But I had a feeling this house was gonna be pretty cool. So let me give you an idea of the stats the first year. Airbnb nights, so I had a total of 280 nights booked on Airbnb in 2021. VRBO 49, which is a total of 320 nights booked. That gives me an occupancy rate of 90%. Now the Smoky Mountains have a high occupancy rate because it's not very seasonal. That's what makes it one of these good markets. Now, if you're in a market that is seasonal, you can do things like have a hot tub, which will get you through the winter a little better. You can do other things. Think about what people are doing when they're not staying there and try to find what you can draw them during that time. Know your market. Every market's different. So I had 14 different stays on VRBO, which counted to the 49 nights, and I had 75 stays on Airbnb, which led to 280 nights. So total, I hosted 89 different groups of people. That's crazy to think, but I have everything automated, right? And that's a big part of it is automating your Airbnb business to make sure that you're not using all of your time in this. Automating your Airbnb business is a big step towards scaling. You don't need to have a property management company because they're gonna take 25% of your gross probably. You can do this, you can set up your automated pricing, you can set up your automated messaging. And if you have good cleaners that kind of act as your eyes and ears along with maybe handyman, things run pretty smoothly. I don't do much of anything with this house, even though I'm hosting 89 different groups at 90% occupancy a year. Now 90% occupancy, I had no idea. Some can say that I could have raised my prices and at 80%, but with the smart pricing with Price Labs, I think it did a great job. And in fact, in 2022, I'm set to beat those numbers. I have raised things up a bit, but in general, prices have gone up all over the place. So let's get into the actual money of how much I made. All right, from what I just read, you understood that I had it listed on both platforms that are popular, Airbnb and VRBO. And I recommend everybody does it. There's higher fees on VRBO, but you can just raise your prices 10% on VRBO to cover that if you want. There may be some days that actually get booked that wouldn't have been booked otherwise. And there's so many different cheap management softwares out there that will pull the calendars in from both of them and manage them for you. They'll also send messages, do accounting for you, a lot of great stuff. All right, so for the year, Airbnb, I brought in $116,919.50. For VRBO, $22,175.31. That brings the total number, ta-da, to $139,094.81. That's how much I grossed for the year for this one property. Now remember, my cash out of pocket was only 53,000 and change, so this investment is insane. So just about seasonality, I'm looking at the numbers here. You can see that the biggest month was actually July with 16,000. So you can see that, yes, during January, the prices are about half what they are in the big months, but it's still pretty dang good, right? And I knew when I found this house, it had character. Remember the big windows, remember the drone shots. The house looks good itself, but I knew I was able to harness what the house had to make this thing hit the Airbnb algorithm. So let's talk about the actual expenses. The numbers I gave you included the cleaning fees, which I collect and then I pass through to my cleaners. I actually don't charge extra because in the Smokies, cleaning is expensive because everything is expensive there. It's kind of like the Redneck Vegas. It's just an expensive place. So going through the expenses every month, I have my mortgage, electricity, water, my Spectrum, which is my internet and I do have TV there because look, if you're gonna pay a lot of money for a cabin, there's a big basketball game or a big football game, people are gonna to wanna to watch it. A lot of the other expenses ended up going to my cleaners because when I had an issue, I told them about it, they took care of it and then I paid them. So when I show you the cleaning fees that I paid, this also includes a lot of the maintenance on the house. So total cleaning fees paid, which includes some of the other maintenance fees, $19,578.25. I also pay a bug sprayer, which is a great investment because this cost me $330 
$35 for the year. They come out for like $30 a month and they spray. And also this helps because if you have a review with bugs or rats, you are sunk. You do not want that to happen. So my general expenses, I include the mortgage in this just for simplicity. My electricity, water, and spectrum is also included in this. And that was a total of $34,594.47. You could take out the mortgage, which is roughly $2,200 a month, about $25,000 a year roughly. Now I'm able to write off on taxes the interest I paid, which is gonna be higher in the beginning. And then also I'm able to depreciate the house. Now, if you do cost segregation studies or bonus depreciation or whatever you're doing, it helps you write off more in the beginning, which can be good because if you're gonna be reinvesting this or taking on more debt, which is tax-free, not interest-free, but it's tax-free, you can actually invest in another Airbnb, which will get that money way back instead of just depreciating it over the course of 27 and a half years or whatever it is. So there's other ways to save on taxes. Why is there a horn going off? Can you hear that? I hope you can hear it. So let's go through the final thing and add it all up. So initially, as I said, cash investment was $53,363. The purchase price of $455,000. The loan, remember, was $409,500. Gross revenue for the year of $139,094. Total expenses of $57,867 with a net profit of $81,227, which is a cash on cash return of 152%. That's a good investment in my book. And so far in 2022, the numbers have been just as good, if not better. Now, I'm gonna have to pay taxes on that. In fact, I'm gonna have to pay taxes on that amount plus the mortgage that was the principal that I paid because you can't write off the principal, only the interest that you paid, but I'll be able to deduct a bunch of other stuff like depreciation on the house too. Now, prices in the Smokies have gone up. My house, I could probably sell today for close to a million dollars. It's insane. Why? Because people have found that market. But you could still invest in that market and still get a big cash on cash return. What I see is a lot of people using their calculators and air DNA and doing their research. And then when they get the house and they use certain strategic things to make the house attractive, like what I do, they find that their cash on cash return ends up being a lot higher. In fact, a lot higher than they could have ever imagined. So there's still a lot of good things out there. But in this crazy market where every house that goes up, if it has character, if it's a cool house, I've seen houses that have had 50 offers on them. It's crazy. I know this market's crazy, we all know this. So what do you do? You look for other markets, and I found that the best thing to do is find houses that have been sitting on the market. Maybe you find a crappy house that nobody wants, but it happens to have 10 acres. Well, maybe you could permit that and put 10 little A-frames on them, one per acre, and now all of a sudden, you have 10 units plus the original house making a bunch of money. You have to do what other people aren't doing. So if you're a new Airbnb investor, this could be a good idea for you, but there's other markets out there. Maybe you buy land and you build a house. Well, how do you build a house? I've never done that before, right? Well, you find somebody that's done it before and maybe you partner up with them. Maybe you can bring some borrowing power to them and then they know how to do it. You partner up and at the end you refinance the house, put it into an LLC, and now you have a business running. Now you have some extra cash maybe. Or maybe you find a great house, the numbers work, and then extra money you're paying with the higher interest rate or the higher price actually doesn't matter because it's still a good return. And it's not a finite box. It's gonna keep evolving and you gotta keep finding the places that are evolving. Other markets are gonna grow. How to research that? Well, that's a whole other video. Thank you for watching. I'm done.